you could be missing out on free performance from your PC by not following these simple steps. Installing Windows is just the beginning, but there is so much more that you have paid for with your PC that you actually need to set up to get the best performance possible. So let's show you how to achieve this just by changing a few settings. Our first step before we do anything is to check for system updates. Usually when you first install Windows, there are new features and security fixes which are normally missing. You can find this by searching for update in the search bar and then click check for updates. The PC may want to restart a few times before you are fully up to date. Just repeat the process until you get the green check mark and that means you are ready to go. Now we can restart our PC and make our way into the BIOS by tapping the delete key repeatedly. There is an easy mode and an advanced mode of the BIOS. The particular RAM we have installed is two 16 gigabyte sticks and it says it's running at 4,800 megahertz, but we know it should be running at 6,000 megahertz. We are missing out on performance here, so we need to enable XMP so that our RAM is running at the speeds that we paid for. For AMD users, the setting will be called AMD Expo. You could also find it under the tweaker menu in the advanced BIOS, right here where it says extreme memory profile. Make sure you select profile one and now we should be running at 6,000 megahertz instead of 4,800. Also says it over here. Resizable bar is a new feature added which allows the CPU to access the entire frame buffer memory of a compatible GPU all at once rather than in small chunks. This performance increase will vary from game to game, sometimes even a small decrease, but the majority will benefit and you can see up to a 10% increase in performance. Now to find this setting, in the boot tab, we need to make sure that CSM support is actually disabled. We're gonna come over to settings. We're going to find IO ports. And right here where it says above 4G decoding, we need to to enable that and make sure resize bar support is also set to enable. Now some manufacturers label this differently, so you're gonna have to look for rebar, resizable bar, or above 4G decoding. Now I'd recommend doing your own testing with rebar. Make sure this feature helps your particular game. If it doesn't, come back and disable it. In my case, it did, providing me a boost of about 5%. Now that we're done here, we can click save and exit, and then save and exit setup, and click yes. And the PC will reset and boot back into Windows. Windows limits what features you can play with, which is really frustrating. Sometimes they give you a watermark on screen because Windows is not activated. Look guys, do not pay hundreds of dollars for Windows. Who Keys have been a channel supporter for over three years now. We used them in all of our personal PC builds and we can get you hooked up with a 25% off discount code on an activation key. All you have to do is use code IFR25 at checkout. I mean, look at this, you can get Windows 10 Pro for around 22 US dollars. Or you can get it for $16 using our coupon code. Oh Windows 11 God. Pro, 30 oh, US hell. dollars. You can actually get that for around 22 US dollars using our coupon code IFR25. I just think that paying, what, 160 to 199 dollars for Windows for an activation key is ridiculous. Okay, so let's add Windows 11 Pro to our shopping cart. You can also get Office 2021 Pro from here if you need things like Excel, Microsoft Word, because they don't come stock with your PC. Wow, look at that. So if you want to get Office from Microsoft, you can expect to pay a reoccurring subscription of 139 Australian dollars per year for the family bundle, or if you want a personal subscription, is $109 reoccurring. Now you can buy Office Home and Student 2020 21 outright for $219, but as I was saying, it's so much more expensive than it needs to be, and it, that really frustrates me. So our current amount is just over 30 US dollars, and then if we apply our coupon code IFR25 at checkout, we reduce that to around 22 US dollars. Now there's plenty of payment methods. I usually just go with PayPal, and we get instant delivery. And guys, if you have any issues, they do have 24 hour support and they've also got their email listed down below and they'll take care of you. Now in the user center, go to my purchased orders and you can view them right here. All you have to do is click view keys and codes. So you can copy the key from here. And if you get stuck here, you can also click on the activation tips and they'll show you the whole process. Down the bottom of Windows, start typing activate. Open up the activation settings. Go to change product key. Now we have access to all of Windows features. I'll leave those links below if you want to check them out further. Just don't go and pay full price for a Windows key. It's just not worth it. Next step is to install our GPU drivers. In my case, I have an NVIDIA GPU. So I'm going to go to NVIDIA.com. AMD users and Intel users will go to AMD.com and Intel.com respectively. 
quickly. Search for your card's particular drivers and then click download. Now, personally, I'm gonna choose the option to install NVIDIA GeForce Experience as well, because I think it really benefits new users. It'll tell them when their drivers are out of date and it's a simple click of a button to install the new driver. There's been a few times where I've gone to load a game and it wouldn't work because the graphics driver wasn't up to date. Now, I don't believe that new users will know what to do to fix this issue. Usually it's a driver issue. So to make it as easy enough for yourself as possible, I'd recommend installing it. You can see right here, we just had an update come through. That was a simple click of one button and that gives us the latest drivers. Motherboard drivers may also be necessary for you or at least having the most up-to-date drivers. You could do this by searching for your particular motherboard model in Google. Click on the support tab. You could choose your particular OS and then choose the particular drivers you need. For instance, you may want LAN if you're going to directly wire your PC to the internet. You may need your audio drivers, so download the first one that is most up-to-date. You may even need Bluetooth drivers, so you can download those as well. And here in the utility section, we can also download Load our motherboard's RGB control software. I'm sure you all know by now how to run a program. Just double click the program, let it run, and it'll all be installed for you. Windows installs a whole load of unnecessary bloatware, which is slowing down your system. Let's remove some of these programs by going into all apps, and then you can go along this list and see what programs you don't actually use. For instance, I've got Disney Plus on here. So if I right click it and click uninstall, it's uninstalled. Pick all of the programs on here so that they're not wasting resources. This next step, so many people don't realize this needs to be done to get the maximum performance out of their monitor. Many people buy the latest and greatest monitors because it has a higher number, 144 hertz, 200 hertz, whatever that might be. So it must be better, but they don't enable its advertised refresh rate. So what do I mean by this? Well, if we go into the Nvidia control panel, click on change resolution and navigate to the refresh rate. It's usually set to 60 hertz by default, but as you can see here, we have a 144 hertz option. So we need to manually change this. So we'll click 144 hertz, then down the bottom right hand side, we'll click apply. For users on AMD or Intel, right click on the home screen, click display settings, scroll down to advanced display. And from here, you can change your refresh rate. So we're obviously going to select the highest number, 144 hertz. Now, while we're still in NVIDIA control panel, go to adjust image settings with preview. Now you can actually go down to use my preference emphasizing, and you can actually change this from quality to performance, or you can have a balanced metric. Obviously performance, it's in the name, you get more performance out of it. So it's up to you to decide what you prefer for your system. Now, if you go to use the advanced 3D image settings and then click take me there, you may want to change texture filtering from quality to high performance. Again, it depends what you're after with your system. Another setting to change is power management mode. So currently it's on normal, but you can actually set it to prefer maximum performance. So now once you have all your settings, make sure you hit apply in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. So if you start typing in power down the bottom and you look for choose a power plan, by default, it'll be on balance. Now, if you want a little bit extra performance out of it, you can actually tick high performance. Now it favors performance, but it will use a little bit more energy. So it's completely up to you if you want to enable that. A few other things I like to do before I do anything else on the PC is I like to install Google Chrome straight away. Now this is personal preference and everyone has their own choices out there. For me personally, I think Google Chrome is much faster than Microsoft Edge. After this is installed, that's when I would start downloading things like Steam, Discord, and whatever other programs that we want. I also love to install a program called hardware info. It lets me keep an eye on all of my PC's health, see if it's running hot. Then I know that I've done something wrong in the PC building process. So that's hwinfo.com. So it's very detailed in this program. We can look at things like our voltages, our core clocks, CPUs currently running at 34 degrees Celsius. GPUs at 53 degrees, and all of our performance cores are running at 5.5 gigahertz. Now guys, I wanna show you the results just by changing all of these settings. Here in our favorite game, Rocket League, we went from 570 FPS all the way up to 598 FPS. That's an extra 28 FPS just by enabling a few settings. It took me like five minutes to do. So I wanted to test another more graphically intense game, Cyberpunk 2077. Now with all of our settings disabled, we were getting 105. FPS. Now this is not a huge jump, but enabling all of our settings, we were able to achieve 108 FPS. I mean, it's free performance, why wouldn't you use it? Now I will say for Cyberpunk in particular, enabling resize bar actually didn't really do anything for the game. We were getting identical results. So that's why I think it's very important that if you tend to stick to a particular 
particular game, maybe do your own testing first. So there you have it guys. Let me know down in the comments below if these settings help to improve your game or not. Also, let me know, do you guys use Resize Bar at all? I'm quite curious who of you in the community actually do utilize this feature. Now, if you're not quite up to this step yet and you wanna learn how you can get Windows for free, then click this video right here. Thanks for watching.